right. So, uh, time to get started here. Um, we are today returning to work on To the Halls of the Stormlord. Uh, this is my OSR Macchiato Monsters um, module that I'm writing for the Gauntlet Codex. Um, this is uh, something that I haven't been working on lately. Um, I think my, my design process really got um, disrupted by uh, some work that came up uh, and also um, I guess just a certain amount of fatigue with working on this. Um, yeah, there was a lot of things that came up. <laughs> There's a lot of things that came up. So, um, no mecha today. We're getting back to some fantasy stuff. Uh, yeah. So, um, to quickly recap uh, what this is all about, I have the pitch document. Um... This is a dungeon crawl module for Macchiato monsters with character funnel elements. Uh, the player characters are members of the hastily assembled Fairweather Company who have been promised honor and treasure if they can placate the menacing storm atop Shathurazan, the mountain. Um, and the PCs are in fact unwitting pawns in the war between the fearsome giants and the cunning gods. The storm lord Arnmunder, one of the mightiest of the giants, has rammed his sky fortress into the dwarven fortress built into Shathurzan, and is using the planar gate the dwarves constructed in order to summon forth the storm that threatens the nearby lands. He plans to use the energies of the storm to forge a god-slaying spear, but the duration of his labors will devastate the area. In response, Uglehildr, Valkyrie in service to the gods, has traveled in disguise to the area and plotted to create the Fair Weather Company to use as her battle host. Her deception is that she knows very well what is causing the storm, and that the adventurers stand little chance in defeating the Storm Lord and his followers. The rabble of the Fair Weather Company are merely candidates that she is determined to test and to reap for souls to join her host of Einherjar the undying warrior thralls of the gods. Uglehildr will elevate those PCs who die in battle on their quest, and only those who die in battle, to the status of Einherjar in exchange for their mortality and their freedom. She plans to use these Einherjar to defeat Arnmunder and seal the storm portal. The module structure is first scaling Shathurzan. We have written that section. Uh, then exploring the ruins of the Dwarven Fortress of Shathur Doom and Finally, entering Armander's Sky Fortress and confronting confronting the Storm Lord. Excuse me. Uh, so the NPCs that we have in this situation are Uglehildr the Valkyrie. Uh, she appears in many guises, manipulates events to her advantage, drives a hard bargain, and is fearless and cunning. And we've actually written a full document on Uglehildr and the different forms she takes. Um, so we don't need to work on that anymore. That's basically taken care of. Uh, and um, Arnmunder, he'll come up in probably, maybe in this section, like maybe he'll show up, but I'm thinking he's probably the next section. He's gonna show up there. Uh, and more importantly, uh, Zarak, the chief engineer of the dwarves, who's forced to work for Onmunder and not happy about it. The dwarven survivors and the Hirmar, stout folk who are intending to use Shathar Doom as their warren and have been sent as invaders who can fit the tunnels of the fortress. Uh, sent as invaders who can fit the tunnels of the fortress, who have been sent by the giants <laughs> as invaders who can fit the tunnels of the fortress. There we go, that's some better English. Uh, use the, uh, they, they use the corpses of dead dwarves to line their dens. Uh, and this is based on the actual behavior of stoats. So, scary stuff. 
All right. Now, where are we at? We are talking about the fortress of Shather Doom. So, the characters have made their way up the slopes of Shather Doom, and or, uh, up the slopes of Shatherazan, and into the fortress of Shather Doom. Uh, there are two ways they can get in. Um, they can either get in by way of the main gate or by way of a lava, a lava tube um, that they might uncover. That's also a possibility. So what about the fortress of Shather Doom itself? Um, the dwarves of Shather Doom swore a century ago to close their gates to the outside world. Yet within their halls, they constructed a wonder, a gateway to the plains beyond. By traversing this gateway, the dwarves con continued their traditions of commerce and exchanged their great craft works for the riches of the multiverse. The legacy of this wide ranging enterprise still marks the fortress, even after catastrophe has reduced it to a shattered and battle scarred remnant of what it was only a few weeks prior. Tropical fragrances and spices lie strewn across its frigid halls and textiles constructs and colors from far stranger places are everywhere to be found. Uh, um, Armunder Sky Fortress was crashed into Shathar Doom with tremendous force and its halls, which had not seen sunlight in many decades, now stand twisted and gaping open to the terrible storms that rage around the mountain. In many places, the exteriors of the two fortresses have been fused together by the titanic forces um, of impact, and structures built to accommodate radically different statures now flow into one another haphazardly. The temporary alliance of dwarf and giant was made by force, and this fact is written into the very stone. Within Shather Doom can be found many creatures, including dwarven residents now at war or subjugated, planar visitors and rogues, and Hirmar invaders sent at behest of Arnmunder to conquer the fortress. The interior is a warrant of factional battles and intrigues, and the party must be cautious in how it approaches those within. The areas of Shather Doom exposed to the elements are in some cases even more dangerous than those upon the mountain face. In narrow passageways, the raw elemental forces conjured at the behest of Arnmunder can strike the unwary with sudden and deadly force. So locations. This is stuff left over from uh, the mountain face. The slopes. So we're going to just get rid of these. Or we'll, we'll keep this title just so we can start working on an area here. So locations. Um... One location, which I have in mind, is a storehouse, a storeroom. Um, So this is a place filled with provisions from various planes and also, of course, with dwarven liquor. Um, and so I'm thinking like, okay, let's, let's think about, so just, you know, write a quick description and then what's there. So. Crates, chests, vaults, and barrels. Rise far above the heads of visitors in the storeroom of Shathur Doom.
this. Sprawling. Storage area is unusually um, spacious for the fortress and characters of non dwarven stature have no uh, 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 stature okay okay interesting that appears to be the Correct spelling, so I don't know what's going on there, Google. Um, characters of non dwarven stature have no difficulty traversing it. So, most places in the fortress, you're going to be kind of hunched over, right? But uh, here in the storeroom, no problem. Um, we'll say like uh, large sections of the storeroom are I will be right back. Apologies, I was just uh, getting a delivery. Um, right, so the l large sections of the storeroom are in a shambles due to the uh, impact of 
Arnmunder's Fortress um, with uh, barrels, crates, With barrels and crates lying split open on the ground. Um, their contents mixing to form a Colorful and pungent mess. Um, what else is in here? Uh, so we'll just say, you know, like, um, Saffron. Nutmeg cover parts of the ground and are mixed with like mixed with pungent no, no, no mixed with powerful smelling puddles of dwarven whiskey um, <laughs> so this is like oh this is this is no good like this is like, oh, you have these spices and there's just like these big puddles of gross whiskey leavings everywhere. Um, yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. Um, okay. We'll also say... Um, What else is going on here? So, obviously, the characters will have the opportunity to tap these reserves. Um, so, like, maybe they roll on a table for what they get. Yeah. Um. Hmm, I wonder what's in Macchiato Monsters that we can find here. Here we go. Um, I mean, we could say, 
This is just like a storeroom for provisions. So I kind of feel like this is not the best table to be using. Um, and yet I don't want to spend more space, like more page real estate, uh, just on an item table. So maybe So maybe it's like you get ration, you get food, you get coffee beans, booze. So like maybe it's kind of like, oh yeah. Okay, here's an idea. Here's an idea. So it, like, assume that the storeroom contains any form of preserved, uh, of non-perishable food you can imagine. Um, a player, so eat, uh, when in the storeroom, um, each player may name a non-perishable food and drink, you can imagine. Uh, may name a food or drink they wish to find and then they're gonna make a skill check to find it, right? Or a stat check. And these things use risk dice in this game, correct? Yeah, 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 yeah. So we'll say, um, they make a stat check. 
with uh, what could they make a stat check with so get them to roll with Wisdom, maybe? It's funny because the... I think the game doesn't actually describe what any of these stats mean. <laughs> so we kind of just have to go off of our received knowledge of D&D. Yeah. So we'll say make a wisdom check yeah okay so each player may name a food or drink they wish to find and roll with wisdom um on a success they get Let's say DR six of the food seems about right. Maybe, yeah, on a, on a success, they get a DR six, on a crit, they get a DR eight, and on a miss they get a dr4 um and are and and must uh must face an encounter yeah cool so on a success they get dr8 of the food uh, on a miss, or sorry, on a crit, critical, they get um, DR10, and on a fumble, they get only a DR4 and must roll an encounter. So this is pretty cool, right? Because it means that they can get any kind of food they could possibly imagine. It is here, right? So I want to I want to emphasize that. Um, uh, the wealth of the plains is assembled in these halls is it assembled and uh, has been assembled in these halls and has formed a magnificent mess Then we put this in here. Okay, so large, so crates, chests, vaults, and barrels rise far above the heads of visitors in the storeroom of Shafar Doom. This 
sprawling storage area is unusually spacious for the fortress, and characters of non-dwarven stature have no difficulty tra traversing it. Uh, the wealth of the plains has been assembled in these halls and has formed a magnificent mess. Large sections of the storeroom are in a shambles due to the impact of Armander's fortress, with barrels and crates lying split open on the ground. Saffron and nutmeg cover parts of... Uh, cover... Saffron and nutmeg... Uh, lie mixed with powerful smelling puddles of dwarven whiskey underfoot. And and this is only the beginning. That is only the beginning of this quartermaster's nightmare. <laughs> Assume that the storeroom contains any form of non-perishable food and drink you can imagine. When in the storeroom, each player may name a food or drink they wish to find and roll a whiz. On a success, they get DR8 of the food. On a critical, they get a DR10. And on a fumble, they get only a DR4 and must roll an encounter. Cool. I think that's enough for the storeroom. That's enough for the storeroom. So let's talk about the foundry. the foundry um so here i'm thinking like you know it's obviously it's is a dwarven fortress it's gonna have a foundry right like that is just par for the course um kind of goes with what uh goes with the territory um i just watched uh infinity war last uh last weekend and the crucible the space dwarf crucible and that was fucking badass um <laughs> i actually got my ideas for the foundry well before that but when i saw like this like sweet star powered foundry for making god slaying axes i was like oh yeah <laughs> this is what i'm talking about all right so you know the the way that the dwarves brought all of these war these uh, riches that we find inside of the storeroom um, into the fortress was by way of trading their crafts, um, and of course many of those would have been uh, constructed in the foundry. Um, so I actually did look up a bit about how foundries work. Um, and unfortunately i didn't record as many of the notes as i would have liked to i have to do a lot of work on the train and it does restrict my work a little bit um but the main thing here is that there is a like the dwarves were at work they had molten metal inside of their crucible and they were they were you know they were preparing to pour it but when the fortress struck uh, the mountain, 
um, the crucible was actually dislodged from its um, not moorings, but uh, was dislodged from its frame, um, and there was molten metal that like poured out across the floor of the foundry, um, and so this is like there you know there's like a I mean obviously this is um. Uh, I don't mean to uh, upset anybody by mentioning this um, because, you know, this is a serious thing that's happening at the current moment, but um, you look at the scenes of devastation right now in Hawaii you know, on the Big Island, um, and you can kind of imagine what was happening in this scene. So, like, you know, this huge fortress um, crashes into the mountainside and, like, rends apart the walls and like you know the 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 rock is fusing together um and you can imagine the devastation that caused right but then you know as as like the the elements enter into the fortress you know there's like huge air pressure changes and at the same time this crucible just goes like flying off of its frame um and and molten metal goes spraying everywhere and flowing across the ground and like you know everything is on fire um so that was the scene of devastation but now um when the players enter into this area the metal will have all set right so um i think that inside of 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 the the, the metal flow uh what's left of the metal on the ground, um, you, you find the remains of, uh, of the workers, um, some of whom uh, were dwarves, of course, uh, but many of whom were actually robots. Uh, so the, there will be like automata who, unlike the dwarves, weren't just simply burnt to a crisp. Uh, they actually like merged into the metal and like maybe some of them are like still uh conscious and but they can't move because they've been like permanently fused into the flow of metal um so like yeah maybe that's like the, the player characters can talk to them um and of course like i'm not again i'm not going to say you know exactly what they encounter here because again that's going to be something that that goes to the the, the random encounter tables um but i will say that there's definitely robots in this area um and other things of interest that they might have here would be like um you know uh dwarven craft weapons and armor in various stages of assembly uh ingots um of various metals you could find um and what else would we find in here oh maybe you can find like a really like um masterwork mold right like so oh i forgot a thing for the storeroom right this is another thing this is a this is a this is i mean this is not super essential but this is the thing i wanted to include because it's a reference to um a burning wheel campaign that i ran uh earlier this year um which ended in a storeroom um, and one of my characters, I was playing as the, as the GM of that game, um, one of my characters was killed in uh, the storeroom. And so I, and he was a dwarf. So I, I wanted to <laughs> put a little reference here. Um, beneath um, a pile of barrels of dwarven st 
left out can be found the body uh, of a of a venerable dwarf uh, clad in a, um, what did they call those in Burning Wheel? Dwarven masks. Just a forge mask. That's not very useful. Uh, clad in a forge mask and grasping at a dwarven craft crossbow. appears to have been killed by the stroke of a sword. So maybe I'll have to take this out. Oh man, my typing. Uh, maybe I'll have to take this out uh, because I won't have enough word count. But this is just self-indulgent. Self-indulgent completely. So let's get back to the foundry. Um, let's do this. I think this is the last thing I'll do tonight. Um, the foundry. Um, okay, so... The impact created by Arnmunder's fortress was so great that it dislodged the colossal oh, the colossal crucible at the heart of the foundry of Shathur Doom. Um, wh what if we give it a name? right like that it dislodged stone blood the colossal crucible at the heart at the foundry of Shaffer doom um uh, that it dislodged stone blood from its frame and sent its contents violently spilling across the floor and the works of the foundry dooming its operators um
those who were not killed by the splash of molten, uh, molten, sorry, molten metal uh, were incinerated by the um, unstoppable <clears throat> cool by the unstoppable flow of the crucible's contents. that slowly consumed the uh, work floor of the foundry. Now the foundry is dark and cold. with the metal having set all across its surfaces. Uh, in In the solidified pools of metal can be found not only the incinerated remains of dwarven workers, but also their Automata, who helped work the foundry and some of whom remain alert and conscious of their plight. Uh, and we'll just say stuff you can find in here. Um, Amongst the ruins can be found um, let's see, do they have any examples in here of ignits? I believe they do. Uh,
myth metal maybe We'll say like Yeah, there'll be Ignits worth platinum DR six. Like this is big big money stuff. Um now it's ink ingots of uh, myth metal worth dr6 um, a uh, masterwork mold um, uh, mold uh, worth uh, gold d10 and um, Dwarven work, melee weapons and armor. Um, or Dwarven craft. Melee weapons, tools, and armor. Okay. All right, so let's have one more look at this. Um, the foundry. The impact created by Arnwinder's fortress was so great that it dislodged stone blood. The colossal crucible at the heart of the foundry of Shathar Doom from its frame that it dislodged. Does this look better? That it dislodged the colossal crucible at the heart of Shathar Doom from its frame. Yeah. And sent its contents violently spilling across the floor and the works of the foundry, dooming its operators. 
those who were not killed by the splash of by the splashes of molten metal were incinerated by the unstoppable flow of the crucible's contents that slowly consumed the work floor of the foundry now the foundry is dark and cold with the metal having set all across its surfaces in the solidified pools of metal can be found not only the incinerated remains of dwarven workers but also their automata who helped work the foundry um who helped work the foundry and some of whom remain alert and conscious of their plight amongst the ruins can be found ingots of met myth metal worth dr6 a masterwork mold worth gold d10 and dwarven craft melee weapons tools and armor cool so this is like the big hall um Okay. All right. Well, um, I think that's probably going to do it for today. Uh, for those of you who watched, uh, thanks for watching. Um, I think we're going to add in some new stuff next time. Uh, there's going to be a singing hall. So I'm going to add that right here to the list. So Dwarven Singing Hall. Um, and maybe I need to include an environmental hazard for getting this stuff. Maybe I need I need some maybe a little bit more description of what the floor is like of the foundry. Um Foundry of Shothar Doom is an elaborate maze of um, what do you call that? maze of catwalks um workstations uh giant tools uh, the foundry of shatter doom was even
even at the height of its operation, an elaborate maze of catwalks, workstations, giant tools, and um, towering furnaces. Um, this was a place of great works renowned throughout the plains for its excellence for its industrial majesty <laughs> yeah known throughout the plains for its industrial majesty there we go okay i think that's clearer that helps all right, and I'll think about this. Maybe there's something, maybe there isn't, I don't know. But, should be interesting. All right, and so things we need, we need the singing hall and we also need the portal, right? The portal. The planar gate. That's the other thing. So I think that will probably be enough locations in itself right there. Because we need to introduce the factions and all the other crap that's happening in here. So I think four locations is quite enough. Um, cool. Well, uh, I think that's it for today. Uh, thanks for watching. And I will see you again soon with another stream.